What up, Screen Fiends? I'm GB, and you're tuned in to Screenheads TV, where we like to discuss all the wonderful things appearing on your movie and your TV screens. In this episode, I'm going to give my review of Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2, titled Stormborn. All right, so after a, a fairly slow first episode, which we I think we all kind of expected the way season six had ended. I mean, yeah, season six had ended so action-packed, right? Uh, I think we all expected it to be a little bit of a slow build this season, uh, but I don't think that build is going to really go much longer. So we had the first episode where not a lot of action, and then we had this episode with not a lot of action till the very end. And then I think every episode will get more and more action until we get to those last one or two. And then it'll be like, you know, Battle of the Bastard, Winds of Winter type of things. Uh, definitely think that that's how it's going to play out. All right. So episode two, a fantastic episode. But when is Game of Thrones ever not a fantastic episode? Even their episodes that aren't like great are still like really, really good. I don't think I've ever seen an episode of Game of Thrones that I was like, that was shit, that was bad, that was garbage, or that was uh, a weak episode. I feel like it really doesn't have any weak episodes. Um, all right, let's get going. First, Daenerys receives an unexpected visitor. So we have um, Melisandre comes, uh, the red woman. And we know how Danny feels about uh, the red priests, priests and priestesses, whatever. They've helped her before. Uh, they helped her in Marine. Um, and they've, uh, you know, they seem to know what they're talking about. So Melisandre comes, and basically what they find out is that uh, they've been translating the prince who was promised wrong the whole time. Where the, the word for prince that they're using doesn't have a gender. So it could really be prince or princess. It doesn't, it, you know, there is no gender on, bearing on the uh, prophecy in its original state. So that's very interesting where now and uh, it's like even more amount of people could be the prince or princess that was promised. So you have John, you have Danny. Maybe they have, they have a kid and their kid is the prince that was promised or the princess that was promised. Or maybe it's both of them together creates the prince and princess that is pro was promised who knows but i'm anxious to see it so with this scene with danny i love the whole melisandre thing was great her sitting down with like all of the uh leaders that are in her camp uh tyrell and um the viper's widow uh the sand snake uh what's her name alaria um you know and then Tyrion is there of course and, uh, you know, you have Grey Worm and all that other stuff. Now, and then you have the Greyjoys. Now, a lot of people, I think, feel like Yara's right. Go right for King's Landing. But, really, Tyrion is making the smart choice. This goes in another part of the uh, synopsis where Tyrion plans the conquest of Westeros. So, instead of going right for King's Landing and turning the people against... Danny, which is what I, if you look at my predictions videos, that's what I was predicting. That's either Cersei was going to turn the people against her, you know, that she's using savages, barbarians, uh, eunuchs, whatever, um, or Danny was going to use those soldiers to invade and scare the people that way. But uh, it doesn't look like it's going to go that way, at least not yet. It's on the Cersei end of things where she's going to start poisoning the people against Danny and what she's capable of and how scary she is. And she's going to paint Danny to be this big giant villain, uh, which is going to turn a lot of Westeros against Danny. I think it's really not going to be um, a happy day. Oh, happy day when Danny does finally take the throne because I think there's going to be like a revolt. The people are not going to be happy and it's going to be like no royal subjects. She doesn't want, she keeps saying she doesn't want to be the Queen of Ashes. Well, Tyrion says it and then she repeats it. And I love that scene. It was a great scene. Um, so, but I think that may be like her bittersweet thing is that she's going to end up being the Queen of Ashes. You know what I mean? Maybe that'll even be her dub, you know, her title. Uh, all right, so so yeah, we have all that, and we see that their plan now is to cut off the supplies and the food 
and that's just great. It, it's uh, it's an amazing approach to uh, turn the people against Cersei. Because Tyrion knows what Cersei's going to do. She turn the people against Danny. So Tyrion's idea is, well, let's flip that and turn the people against Cersei. Um, and start the rioting and the revolting within their within King's Landing, which is an amazing tactic. And who knows if it's going to play out that way, seeing as how the episode ends. But we may get that, but probably not. It was good in theory, though. Uh, all right, um, because I tell you, Cersei's not going to be a pushover. She's going to fight back, and she's going to use a lot of brain power and a lot of whatever money or loyalty she has left to her advantage. Believe that. All right, so let's move forward with that. Oh, I did like how the episode started on the storm. She's Daenerys Stormborn. Tyrion even makes reference to it. I loved all that. Um, and I love how they're not planning on staying at Dragonstone for much longer. They make that abundantly clear, right? All right, so let's move over to Jon. So Jon faces revolt. Now, uh, basically, Jon, you know, he gets the letter from Tyrion. He gets a letter from Sam, both explaining to him that he's really should be going to Dragonstone. One, for Dragonglass. Two, to try and maybe get Danny to, to help out with the cause. They're going to need the manpower, you know? They're going to need maybe the dragons. All of this is alluded to, right? They talk about all this in the episode. So we're getting a lot of info dump in Season 7. They're really, really coming at us with a lot of info each episode, if you really pay attention. So, you know, of course, nobody's really happy about it. Even Lyanna Mormont, even the little bear, she's not really too enthused with it. Um, and it kind of hurts John to see her going against him. Uh, but I think uh, naming some, putting Sansa in charge, I think, gave everybody a little bit more confidence. And the fact that he's not forcing everybody else to go with him like a lot of other kings would do. He's saying, look, if you guys aren't willing to do it, you know, I'll do it myself. It needs to be done. We need the dragon glass. And I don't think this is going to cause a revolt yet. Maybe one or two families will debate whether or not they should join Cersei. Um, which will add to Cersei's army, and I can see that happening. Um, most notably, the families that were defeated, the ones that sided with Ramsay, I can see maybe the Car Starks joining, you know, um, uh, Cer you know, Cersei, whatever. But I, I definitely think that there, there won't be a big revolt, but I can see Jon losing some families behind him siding with the Targaryen. I can totally see that. Um, especially as more truths come out, I can see more of the North backing away from John once they find out that he's not Ned Stark's kid and all this other stuff. But he's still a Stark. You know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. I'm really interested to see how this is going to go. I uh, messed up Rick's gun back there. I'll fix it later. All right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what we really get with John was that he wants to go meet with Danny. He wants to go try and get the dragon glass. He's really about trying to get shit done because he knows the White Walkers are coming. And once they get past the wall, there's not enough Northerners to fight them off. So they have to start trying to band together all of Westeros for the war. They have to. Um, all right. So now let's talk about some stuff that's not in the synopsis real quick. We get Sam. Uh, who's actually stepping it up in a big way. Like, he's really being gangster this season. He stole the key to get the books, to get the info for the White Walkers, because nobody will help him. Um, and he's busting his ass to, to get this info. We've seen that last episode, right? With all the shit buckets and everything. And then, uh, now he takes it upon himself to go against the Maester's word and try and cure Jorah. And it, mighty painful, too, it looks. Now, will it be successful? I don't see it being successful, but I feel like the Stone Men are going to be important. Maybe they're going to help fight the war somehow, or maybe... I don't know. I just felt always felt like the Stone, the stone Men were going to be important. Or maybe Sam will end up curing all of them, and that will be, you know, another couple of thousand troops or something like that. Uh, or maybe he won't cure Jorah at all. Just he'll cure Jorah long enough for him to go and uh, help Danny in some way. I don't know. I don't really understand where they're going with his character. I love his character. I have since the beginning. He's a great character, Jorah. And I'm really intrigued to see where they go with it. Um, and I love how they, they keep referencing Shireen. It's like she hasn't died in vain, you know? Like her legacy still lives on. I, I like that. You know, that's really good. Um... 
Yeah, and then, so we got all that stuff with Sam. That was good. We get Nymeria back for a brief second with Arya. And I really thought things were going to go bad for Arya for a second. I really did. I thought she was going to maybe get her hand bitten off. Because Nymeria didn't look like she was playing. And I don't think she rec recognized Arya at first. Because Arya is not the girl she once knew. And Nymeria is not the wolf that Arya... It's so awesome. Their story is the same. Right? So Arya doesn't want to be the girly girl. Right? She doesn't want to uh, you know, sew and wear dresses and all that. And her and Ned have a nice conversation about it where it's basically, it's not me. I don't know if she says it to Ned or Ned says it to her, but that's not you. You know, you're not that person. So what does Ned do? Get to the sword lessons. Ned is really a good dad, you know. He's, uh, he's what a lot of new age parents are like. When their kids are really into something and they really like something, they encourage the kid to do that, even if it's against um, society or culture's uh, norm, right? So, you know, we see that here where it's Arya was never that person. And you know what? Nymeria, the direwolf, was never a uh, captive. She was never a pet. She was a wild animal. She belonged out in the wilderness. Even though Arya had, it was a touching scene too, and she had to throw rocks at her to get Nymeria to go. But look at Nymeria now, leading the pack, mad wolves following her, uh, ruling the forest, it looks like. And that's who Nymeria is. Just like Arya... Being a killer is who she is now. Like, she's always been a gangster. So, I think in her tell, like, she was going to go head to the north because what she learns about John and, oh, it was good seeing Hot Pie again, too, right? So, what she learns about John and Sansa from Hot Pie, she's getting ready to go north. And I think seeing Nymeria is going to make her change and go back to King's Landing. Because she realized that it's not you, Nymeria, to come with me to the north. And even though I belong in the north and I should go back to the north, it's not me right now to do that. And I think Arya is going to go back on her killing spree. I do. Um, and I think her mind was changed up until the whole Ny Nymeria thing. I love that scene. Very touching. Very poignant. Very thematic. Very just deep, if you really paid attention to that scene. I'll probably do a video just dissecting that. And uh, then finally, we get the awesome battle with the Greyjoys. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Real good pa uh, pirate stuff. I wish it was bigger in scope. Because uh, it seemed like really small in scope for what's going on in Season 7. Uh, but Euron is fierce on the battlefield, man. He was He's a scary villain. The more I see him, the more I learn of him... And the more they show us of what he's capable of, the ship, his, excuse me, his battle axe and all that. Uh, really, really, really scary stuff. Um, and Theon, man. I don't know if it was good at what he did or bad, you know. It was the pussy, scaredy thing to do. But he probably saved his own life and Yara's life. Because I doubt Yara, Yara got killed right then. Uh, you know, Euron's probably going to want to have some fun with Yara, but... You see the pirates cutting out tongues, mutilating bodies. All of this was bringing back up, you know, Reek and, and Ramsey and all that. And, uh, you know, leaving Yara to that means that Yara could get tortured now stuff too. I, I don't think I can side with, your, with, uh, with Theon, man. I'm sorry. As bad as I feel for him at times, I don't know if I can get behind that. That choice. But that was an awesome scene. You made Euron really scary. We see what he was going after now. Prisoners. Whoever he can get from that fleet. Whether it be Yara. Whether it be uh, uh, the Sand Snakes. Whatever. And we got two Sand Snakes dead. Two Sand Snakes left. So that's obviously who the, uh, the gift is going to be. That he's going to bring Cersei. She's not happy at all. Because they killed Marcella, Her daughter. So... Oh, man, things are ramping up mighty quickly. I'm so excited. Like I said, I wish I could just binge this whole thing. I got nothing else to say. I don't think about it right now without me rambling and making this video a half hour. So I'm going to leave it at that. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this episode of Game of Thrones or what you think about Season 7 or anything Game of Thrones related you want to talk about. Hit me up down there. I'm usually good with getting back to comments eventually. Maybe not every day. I got to get better with that, actually. Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment. Uh, it helps me out. Uh, it helps the channel out. And definitely, 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 definitely look out on the channel for more Game of Thrones stuff, as well as a slew of other shows I do. 
I, I do movies here and there as well. Um, but if you like the Game of Thrones content, then I'm sure you'll like some of the other shows I do as well. Uh, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Always appreciate it. You guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.